Hello, my name is James Rico. I'm a sales engineer with Quest Software. Today we're going to begin looking at the unique features of Case Cloud Mobile Device Manager. You know, today we're faced with a growing number of, of remote workers using uh, various operating systems, uh, and it's imperative we effectively, effectively manage those devices to keep your data secure. So let's get started by taking a look at how Case Cloud Mobile Device Manager can help you do that. And we'll, you know, we'll kind of start by talking about in, you know, enrolling your devices and how enrollment-based uh, management is different than traditional device management. So typically, in the old days, you'd have a Windows machine. Uh, we'd have an agent we'd put on there and some sort of uh, server or application that would be managing that endpoint via that agent. With the Case Cloud MDM, we're going to do it in an enrollment-style base management. So a user will uh, log into their device, authenticate, and then we're going to drop a profile on that endpoint and manage that device. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, I'm logged into our Case Cloud MDM product right now. If I go over to the Settings tab, uh, we can take a look at. There's some different integrations we can do back here. So from the Android side of things, we can tie into Google Play. Uh, if you have Samsung Knox devices, uh, we can integrate with Samsung Knox. Uh, if you have uh, Mac OS, Apple OS, or any of the iOS devices, or uh, even Apple TV, we can tie in with the Apple School account or Apple Business account and do DEP, en DEP enrollment. Uh, on the Windows side of things, there's a, a manual enrollment, and there's also a uh, autopilot enrollment that can be done in conjunction with Azure AD. So again, what this can allow you to do is a user can get a new device that's been uh, you know, reset or it's you know brand new out of the box experience. Uh, they can log into that device with their uh, company email. Uh, they'll authenticate, and then whatever uh, profiles uh, that you've built out in the Case Cloud MDM will get provisioned against that endpoint. So, at a high level, we're looking at the library screen here right now. Uh, these are the uh, high level categories of things we can do and manage against those endpoints. So basically, you can set it up uh, and make it ready for the user to do their do their work. There are two types of enrollment. So there's kind of like a uh, out of the um, a company owned experience, like you the company owns the device, and there's also a BYOD experience. So uh, you you probably have um, you know every company probably has this experience. So you'll issue somebody a laptop, but then they also have their personal mobile device that you, that, uh, you would also want to provision so they can you know get their work email or have access to uh, work resources. So you know. You're, you one person with multiple devices, so we need uh, with MDM we're able to manage that. If it is a um, a BYOD device or a device that's already in use in the field, like somebody's already using it, so you don't want to do a reset. It is a company-owned device, so you, you do need to hook into that and start managing it. So we can do that uh, by again allowing the user to enroll that device. So I'm on the device tab, and here in the middle, if I click on enrollment options. I can click on Enroll Devices, and when we open that up, on the right side pane over here, we'll have instructions for enrolling devices. So it defaults to Android for work, uh, but if I open that up, maybe I have an iOS device, then my set of instructions down here will change, and I can uh, copy this to the clipboard, email these instructions to a user, or put them in a KB article you know, somewhere where they can access it. And they're basically going to click on your uh, enrollment URL, and that's going to be tied to your tenant. So when they click that, a profile, well, they'll get, um, you know, prompted to answer a few questions. Basically, do you want to allow this device to be managed? Is it company owned or BYOD? So they'll kind of tap through that. And then when they're when they're finished, um, we're going to be managing that endpoint. Uh, so we'll we'll be able to uh, drop configurations, drop restrictions on it applications, um, you know, all the things you'd want to do to manage that endpoint. Okay, so now we got our devices enrolled, um, you know, again, being a Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and they're all going to show up in the center pane. Um, and, just, you know, just for the dem demonstration, we'll, we'll suppose we've already set up and configured those items and, you know, people are actively using them. So what are some unique features and things you can do uh, by using an enrollment style of management against an endpoint? So one thing is, um, we'll go ahead and grab a virtual machine here that I've got set up for testing. We'll take a look at it. 
but we can do device actions against that. So uh, the name of the machine is, is right here. So this is a Windows 11 Pro machine. It's enrolled, it's in compliance, it's responding. So one of the things about enrollment style management is we're really managing for a device to be in a state. So you've set up configurations, applications, things you want to be on there, and we're constantly monitoring that to make sure that that device is in a compliant state. Um, so once it's there, you know, what else, you know, what are things we may want to do? So some device actions we might run against an endpoint or, you know, we want to update an inventory. So we want to tell that device, hey, I need to know your status right now and give me a, a detailed inventory of the device, the configuration, the application. So that's a device action you can run. If I go to more actions here, we can do other things. Uh, unenroll, reset, uh, delete the device, restart the device, shut the device down. Uh, because this is a Windows device, there are some Windows specific features or actions we can do. Um, we can run a clean PC. If we're managing the BitLocker recovery keys, we can rotate the keys, we can wake the device up. Clean PC is actually a, a, a unique Windows feature that it keeps the user's profile but resets Windows and removes all the applications, it kind of puts it in a clean state uh, for use. And we'll take a look at a couple of the devices. So here's a, an iPhone, and this happens to be a personal owned device. It's enrolled. It's not a compliance, so there's a compliance issue. Uh, I can click the, the button here and, and see what that issue is. And down here, it looks like it's not reported as location in the allotted amount of time. We'll, we'll come back to that in a minute, and we'll talk about that. Um, but you know, it's easy to find out why the device is not compliant. And it is responding as of six hours ago. Uh, this happens to be my personal device that's in here. And again, I can see security information here. Uh, but up here at the top, um, I have some options. So I can, I can lock the device, force an inventory. And again, I have these same set of things like we did in the Windows device. But what's different, because it's iOS, then we have another set of updates. So we can check for an operating system update. We can update the operating system, put it in loss mode, enable, disable that. We can play the loss mode sound. We can clear user restrictions and remove the activation lock. So these controls, they have a little picture of a phone, and then this says the EP. They require the device to be in a company-owned uh, state or supervised mode is uh, the iOS term they use when they talk about that. So it needs to be a company-owned or supervised device for these controls to be uh, applicable to a device. Uh, activation lock would be a company-owned device. Um, you have a DEP enrolled and a user enters their own iTunes information and sets up Find My iPhone on the device. And then if they terminate or lose the phone or turn it back in or whatever, if they don't unlock that device, it's got an activation lock. And you know Apple's done that so people can't steal a phone and reuse it easily. Well, the remove activation lock will allow you to click a button and remove that activation lock so you can reset the device and give it to a new employee or whatever you need to do with that at that time. And let's go ahead and take a look at a um, Android device. We'll open that up. Again, same summary information. We can lock inventory. Uh, the more actions is going to be very similar, the same stuff. Uh, but here we can clear the wallpapers, set the passcode. Uh, there is an Android agent we installed during the install, um, provisioning of the device. And we can refresh the Manage Play account. So again, different OSs will have different things available that you can uh, set against them. And next, we'll pull up uh, a Mac OS device. Take a look at that. And if we come in here and take a look, I've got check for OS updates, update the operating system, enable remote desktop, uh, disable remote desktop, uh, firmware password set and clear and wake up the device. One of the things Apple's done recently, a, a couple versions back, was require an MDM tool to update the operating system. So we can multi-select devices in here and tell that endpoint to update the operating system. So a lot of things that are going on in here. Uh, uh, device actions are very handy. A device is lost, stolen. You need help somebody do some troubleshooting. Those are uh, very good and key things you can do with that. Next, we'll take a look at um, location tracking. Again, that's a big thing that 
uh, people would typically like to do with mobile device management and company-owned devices. So if we go into location rules here, I can set up um, basically a policy for location tracking against my devices. So I can have one or more policies. So if I have different groups of devices or maybe use cases for devices, I can specify different policies based on that. But I would really just come in here and um, you know, fill in the blanks and make the selections I'd want. So I'll just call this test. On detail level, we can tell it not to collect data. So no location tracking. Or we can do on-demand location tracking. So it only will track location when we, we say, you know, locate this device. The next uh, set of options are really how frequently the device is going to check in. And it's going to be based on movement of the device. So low power, it's going to check in every one kilometer. Balanced is every 100 meters. And the highest accuracy is uh, 10, 10 meters. So it'll ping in every 10 meters. And there's some custom, so you can kind of do your own balance if you like. Um, we also built in some controls uh, that help you comply with GDPR type requirements. So a lot of states are actually starting to enact their own uh, privacy policy laws as it pertains to IT. And we're really, we've done this to comply with GDPR, which is, tends to be the most strict. Uh, so suspension limits is um, going to allow a user on their phone to suspend tracking, and I'm toggling the, the number of hours here, but it can be min hours, minutes, or days. So you can set up where somebody can suspend tracking on their device. Again, it's typically a company-owned device. And it basically turns or turns off or suspends the location tracking. So if they have a, um, a medical appointment or a legal appointment, whatever it may be, they can kind of suspend that tracking. Now, it is a company-owned device, so you do have the right to know where it's at and be able to retrieve it if you need to. So there's a compliance option here. If we check that, I can have it say, hey, this device is not compliant if it hasn't checked in in X amount of hours. So possibly if I set my uh, compliance for three hours, maybe I set the, out of, you know, the compliance limit to nine hours. So if they snooze it more than three times, it'll show up as non-compliant. And then I can you know, call the user up, send them an email, say, hey, you know, we're just trying to make sure things are okay. I uh, need to enable tracking on your device. Or maybe they just give you a valid reason and it's okay and you don't worry about it for a few more days. The other thing we've built in to help you comply with uh, GDPR is uh, linking your data privacy policy. So you can actually uh, copy and paste the text in or have a link to your website. Uh, so the user is apprised of their data privacy policy when this is initially uh, turned on on their device. So that's basically how you set up uh, location tracking. Uh, let's go back over to the devices, and I'll pull my iPhone up. And if I go to location under iPhone, and basically it's going to pull up a map. Um, and you can see it's got a lot of check-ins, and it's been some different places. Down here at the bottom is where it's checking in from. And it's, you know, and I can zoom in or out uh, of the map as, as I need to. Uh, if I click on it, it'll expand out and kind of show where it's been. Uh, one of the nice things here, um, we actually show address um, of where a device is. So uh, you can pinpoint where a device has been or where it may be at now. That's uh, very helpful. Today we looked at the challenges of a remote workforce uh, with you know various operating systems, you know people that have multiple devices, and how we're able to manage them. Uh, with Case Cloud EM MDM, we have some unique features. Um, you know, we talked about uh, different ways to enroll a device, uh, profile-based management, device actions, location tracking. Uh, all those things are available to you that are not in some traditional you know, endpoint uh, management so uh, solutions that you might use. For more information about how Case Cloud MDM can uh, help you, please visit us at quest.com. Uh, you can sign up for a 14-day trial. Um, we'll have a QR code up here so you can just scan that with your phone if you like. And uh, we'll look forward to helping you.